not compromise who we are to be accepted by the crowd. We want substance in the place of popularity. We want to think our own thoughts. We want love, not lies. We want knowledge, understanding, and peace. We will not lose because we are not losers. We are lasers. <laughs> peace to Lupe. Know the Atman, self, as the lord of the chariot, and the body as the chariot. Know also the intellect to be the driver, and mind the reins. Let me read that one more time. Know the Atman, self, know the self, as the lord of the chariot, and the body as the chariot. Know also the intellect to be the driver, and mind the reins. The senses are called the horses. The sense, the sense objects are the roads. When the Atman, self, is united with the body, senses, and mind, then the wise call him the enjoyer. In the third chapter, Yama defines what part of our being dies and what part is deathless, what is mortal and what is immor immortal. But the Atman, the higher self, is so entirely beyond human conception that it is impossible to give a direct def definition of it. Only through similes can some idea of it be conveyed. That is the reason why all the great teachers of the world have so often taught in the form of parables. So here the ruler of death represents the self as the lord of this chariot of the body. The intellect or discriminative faculty is the driver who controls these wild horses of the senses by holding firmly the reins of the mind. The roads over which these horses travel are made up of all the external objects which it, which it, which it attract or repel the senses. The roads over which these horses travel are made up of all the external objects which attract or repel the senses. The sense of smelling follows the path of sweet odors. The sense of seeing the way of beautiful sights. Thus each sense, unless restrained by the discriminative faculty, seeks to go out towards its special special objects. When the self is joined with the body, mind, and senses, it is called the intelligent enjoyer, because it is, it is the one who wills, feels, perceives, and does everything. He who is without discrimination, and whose mind is always uncontrolled, his senses are unmanageable like the vicious horses of a driver. But he who is full of discrimination and whose mind is always controlled, whose senses are manageable, like, like the good horses of a driver, the man whose intellect is not discriminative and who fails to distinguish right from wrong, the real from the unreal, is carried away by, the sense, by his sense passions and desires just as a driver is carried away by a vicious by vicious horses vicious horses over which he has lost control but he who clearly distinguishes what is good from what is merely pleasant and controls all his outgoing forces from running after apparent momentary pleasures his senses obey and serve him as good horses obey their driver he who does not possess discrimination, whose mind is uncontrolled and always impure, he does not reach that goal, but falls again to samsara, realm of birth and death. But he who possesses right discrimination, whose mind is under control and always pure, he reaches that goal, from which he is not born again. The man who has discriminative intellect for the driver and a controlled mind for the reins reaches the end of the journey, the highest place of Vishnu, the all-pervading and unchangeable one. A driver must possess first a thorough knowledge of the road, 
Next, he must understand how to handle the reins and control his horses. Then he will drive safely to his destination. Similarly, in this journey of life, our mind and our senses must be wholly under the control of our ha- our higher. Blah, blah, blah. Similarly, in this journey of life, our mind and senses must be wholly under the control of our higher discriminative faculty. For only when our forces work in unison can we hope to reach the goal, the abode of absolute truth. <sighs> that is the amazing Upanishads. And I'm going to just read a little bit of the back uh, real quick. Amazing. Um, the Upanishads. Uh, the Upanishads of the Hindu faith are believed to have been written about 700 B.C. And although nothing nothing is known of the authorship, they are considered by some to be the highest philosophy ever conceived by the human mind. And I just want to read something real briefly out of this here. This is the Quran questions for Moorish Americans. And if we go here, we have... Just a couple of questions I wanted to read to you. Yes, here we are. How many cells are there? Two. Name them. Higher self and lower self. Um, what is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life and breeds justice, mercy, love, and right. Can the high, higher self pass away? No. Why? Because it is Allah in man. Mm. The higher self is Allah in man. This book, the Upanishads, is talking about the self, the Atman, is the higher self, is controlling. Interesting, huh? 700 BC some of the highest philosophy ever conceived by the human mind this little pamphlet is talking about the higher self and the lower self it's also in the Quran it's interesting interesting thank you for watching peace and love